We've seen that photo excitation makes a molecule more reactive both as an oxidizing agent and as a reducing agent. The particular course followed by a molecule under a given set of conditions depends both on what the molecule is reacting with and on the character of the excited state itself and the structure of the excited molecule. In this video, in the next, we'll investigate some structural factors that allow us to draw conclusions about whether a particular excited state is more likely to be oxidized or reduced intrinsically. And this has to do with whether the molecule in question is what we call electron poor, in possession of electron withdrawing groups, or electron rich. In this first video, we'll look at electron poor sensitizers, excited states of relatively electron deficient molecules which tend to want to undergo reduction, accepting electrons in order to form radical anions. And reductive quenching of these electron poor sensitizers can be an important step in photocatalyzed reactions where the excited state is acting in a catalytic way. To think about the propensity of a molecule to undergo oxidation or reduction, we need to define two quantities. And you've probably heard of these before. The first is the ionization potential, which we'll abbreviate as IP. And the second is electron affinity, which we'll abbreviate as EA. And to see the meanings behind these terms, I think it's easiest to look at some energy diagrams. So here are three hypothetical molecules. Let's call them A, B, and C with different orbital energies of their HOMO and LUMO. What we call the ionization potential, I'm actually going to underline in red, is the oxidation potential of the molecule as an electron donor. And roughly speaking, we can think of this as the energy required to expel an electron from the HOMO of the molecule into oblivion or what is more formally called vacuum, essentially completely separated from the molecule. This energy gap between the HOMO energy and vacuum is essentially the ionization potential. Now, the orbital energy cannot always be used as the ionization potential per se, but it's a good enough rough approximation for our purposes. This approximation makes use of Koopman's theorem, which connects orbital energies with state energies in a bit of a wishy-washy way, but it's good for qualitative considerations. The electron affinity is the reduction potential of the molecule as an electron acceptor. And it is the energy difference between the LUMO and vacuum. It is the energy that is gained by the molecule when an electron comes from vacuum and is accepted into the LUMO. Even though electron affinity corresponds to energy release, we typically express it as a positive number. It's worth keeping in mind that that corresponds to an amount of energy released when an electron is accepted. So I've gone ahead and added electron affinities and ionization potentials for molecules B and C to make a point about the magnitudes of these numbers as a function of orbital energies. It's very clear from the diagram that the orbital energies are decreasing or becoming more negative as we move from A to B to C. Now that we've defined electron affinity and ionization potential, we can also see that the Ea and Ip increase as the orbital energy becomes more negative. Put another way, as the orbital energies of the molecule decrease, both electron affinity and ionization potential increase in magnitude. It becomes more energy releasing to accept an electron into the lower energy LUMO, and it becomes more difficult to eject an electron from the lower energy HOMO as those orbital energies decrease. And given that electron affinity and ionization potential are more or less, again, approximately rooted in these orbital energies, we can start to understand the structural factors that affect ionization potential and, and electron affinity. And the first, and perhaps the most important, is the electronegativity of atoms involved in the molecule. The more electronegative the atoms are in the molecule, the greater the ionization potential, since the orbital energies are lower by definition, essentially, and the greater is the electron affinity. The other thing worth looking at here is resonance electron donation or withdrawal. Groups that donate electrons via resonance tend to push up orbital energies and make electron affinity and ionization potential decrease in magnitude, while withdrawing groups tend to increase ionization potential and electron affinity by lowering those orbital energies. One last thing I'll mention that's sort of a related point is that the presence of non-bonding lone pairs tends to decrease ionization potential because those non-bonding lone pairs tend to be higher energy than bonding electrons, and so they're easier to ionize for that reason. 
ionization potential and electron affinity clearly are related to the propensity of a molecule to undergo oxidation and reduction. The greater the magnitude of electron affinity, the more likely a molecule is to undergo reduction since it's more stabilizing, more energy lowering for the molecule to accept electrons. On the other hand, the greater the ionization potential, the more difficult it is to oxidize the molecule in question since the electron that would be removed in the oxidation process is lower in energy. Just to sum that up, we can note that C of these three molecules is the hardest to oxidize because it has the greatest ionization potential and the lowest homo energy. For exactly the same reason, compound A is the easiest to oxidize. It has the lowest ionization potential and the highest energy homo. Likewise, we can connect electron affinity with the propensity of a molecule to be reduced. Molecule C is the easiest to reduce because of its very large electron affinity, the great amount of energy released when an electron is accepted into the lumo. Molecule A, on the other hand, is the hardest to reduce because of its relatively high energy luma. Now, in electron-poor molecules, we have what are called electron-withdrawing groups. I cover electron-withdrawing and donating groups in more detail in my Chem 2311 playlist, so I'll link to a video there within this video. But here I just want to briefly review what constitutes a resonance withdrawing group. So the general picture of a resonance electron withdrawing group is some atom X, which is connected to a pi system. Typically here we'll have a double bond, triple bond, aromatic ring, etc. X is connected via a double or triple bond to a Y, and Y is more electronegative than X. And so X is partially positive, Y partially negative, and there is a propensity or a tendency of the pi electrons to head towards Y. And so we can think about resonance structures where we pull electron density from the pi system and end up giving it to Y. Now, the classic example of a resonance electron withdrawing group is the carbonyl. You know, for example, in an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, the carbonyl group is withdrawing electron density from the attached carbon-carbon double bond through this kind of resonance. Another classic example is the cyano group, the CN triple bond. For similar reasons, with the nitrogen being more electronegative than the carbon atom, the cyano group pulls electron density from an attached pi system. So in a molecule like acrylonitrile, we have a very important resonance form where there's negative charge on the nitrogen atom and positive charge on that distal carbon atom on the other end of the pi system. One last group I'll mention is the SO double bond, which has the propensity to act as an electron withdrawing group via resonance. And so, for example, we can look at a sulfoxide or sulfone and see the electron withdrawing power of the SO double bond oxygen being more electronegative than sulfur, resonance structures that pull electron density from here, the attached CC pi bond, are very important to consider. So having seen this general picture of what an electron withdrawing group looks like, we can now ask the question, what is the effect of an electron withdrawing group on the electron affinity and ionization potential of an attached pi system? Is photo-excited acrylonitrile more likely to accept an electron or donate an electron? And there's an intuition here, so I encourage you actually to pause the video and think through this before I reveal the next part of this slide and talk through the answer. So if we do a simple orbital analysis here, we'll see that electron withdrawing groups increase ionization potential and electron affinity via lowering orbital energies. We can roughly think of the electron withdrawing group as exerting kind of a downward pressure on the orbital energies. And we can see here how relative to a case with no electron withdrawing group, otherwise identical, just having no electron withdrawing group, say hydrogen instead of an EWG, the ionization potential has increased since the HOMO has been lowered in energy and the electron affinity has increased because the LUMO has been lowered in energy. This increase in ionization potential and electron affinity has two important implications. The molecule is now easier to reduce and it's harder to oxidize. So typically these compounds containing electron withdrawing groups will undergo reductive quenching upon photoexcitation. They already have relatively low energy LUMOs and photoexcitation lowers the energy of that hole even more, meaning that these electron poor molecules as we call them containing electron withdrawing groups tend to undergo reductive quenching. 
And we can see examples of this all over the literature. This acridinium ion here, abbreviated as acroplus mes, is a common organic photoredox catalyst, and it's most commonly used as an electron acceptor. We can understand why that is if we look at the structure and notice the presence of a profound embedded withdrawing group in this structure, the form of the iminium group here, or more broadly, pyridinium type ring here. Photoexcitation causes a shift in the positive charge density, and that's actually reflected in a difference between the way we write these structures, acr plus mes for the ground state, and acr with a radical and mes with the positive charge in the excited state. This is an excited state of this ion. Even so, this ion has positive charge and a great electron withdrawing group within it. And so notice that we formed a radical cation via reductive quenching of the excited state. We have reduced the acromes plus to acromes in the ground state and formed a radical cation. The tendency of this excited state to undergo reductive quenching is very easy to understand from number one, the positive charge, and number two, the presence of an electron withdrawing group within the structure. If we start with an electron donor that is even more electron rich, such as an organometallic reagent here, here we have a trifluoroborate, this we can almost think of as a carbanion type of structure. Not quite, but it's got that kind of vibe going on with quite a bit of negative charge associated with the carbon atom. In the photocatalyst in this reaction, we see the presence of a large number of fluorine atoms. Think back to the effect of electronegativity on ionization potential and electron affinity. This is going to increase the magnitude of both and encourage reductive quenching of this very electron-poor photocatalyst. In the midst of this mechanism, that photo-excited iridium complex accepts an electron from the benzyl trifluoroborate here. This results in the radical anion of the iridium complex and a neutral benzyl radical, with K plus and BF3 sort of acting like spectators in this process. So here we're using a more negatively charged electron donor and getting a neutral radical out instead of a radical cation because we more or less started with negative charge on the carbon already. Finally, a very important application of this idea of electron-poor chromophores or sensitizers accepting electrons concerns the reactions of amines. Amines are great electron donors in their own right and have very low ionization potential intrinsically because the homo energy of an amine is relatively high. Under these circumstances, we can use even kind of electron neutral sensitizers. So there are no great electron withdrawing groups in this complex, aside from the C and double bonds. This is relatively electron neutral, and even this iridium complex can accept an electron from the mean to form an iminium radical cation. And you can see that key step right here in the conversion of 13 to 14. The iridium complex is photoexcited, and it accepts an electron from the amine to form the amine's radical cation. And although this kind of obscures it via the change in oxidation state, an anion, quote unquote, a radical anion of the iridium complex, which has iridium in the plus two oxidation state. This happens even with this relatively electron neutral iridium complex because 13 has a very low ionization potential. And this is very typical of amines and some weak inorganic bases such as carbonate.